Hello and welcome to the Quebec channel. I'm Jason, your host. Things can always get better. People say that, but I'm a living proof that they can. After Paula died, I was in the darkest place possible. I had no reason to go on, nobody in my life. The noise in the background is the wash, I'm just doing a wash. And if we look back at the low points, the death of Paola, um, going through those months of loneliness and as the depression and everything too cold, as my entire coping strategy, which was based around Paola for 20 years, was torn away. And how close I came to an end of line situation. Me back then would never have thought that there was anything for me in this world. And when I first moved into here, the absolute terror of being in a house that had been stripped bare, that had been basically destroyed, sabotaged, and having drug dealers, prostitutes, and mentally hurt people next door who would cross the barrier between the two houses, who would bash on my door, who would go in my backyard looking for stuff, who would go in my front door and ring my bell over and over and over again. I remember every single night when I shut down the stream, picking up everything electronic, everything that was part of my safe space, moving it upstairs into the upstairs with me. I remember having a camera up there facing this room in case anybody actually broke into the room or broke through the back window and took stuff so that there was a record of the attack. I remember living like that. And look at me now. Look at what I've got now. Look at how I've been able to have this. Look at how things have gotten better. Is he any wonder that I expect the worst? Like when it came to them wanting to do a review of my pip, and I was so freaked out about it that I just expected things to go badly, expected to lose my money, expected the person reviewing me to try to trick me into something to get me off benefits. I expected my entire life to go down. And in, and in return, what actually happened was a validation of my illness is a validation of my mental state, a validation of everything like that, and suggestions of how I could make things better for myself. And now look at me. I have the safe space set up for the entire house. I don't have to hide in my bedroom. I don't have to hide in the streaming room anymore. I can come down into the kitchen and talk to you here and feel completely comfortable. I don't think someone's going to break into the back through the back door or break through the back window. I created coping strategies and the house was help was reinforced in the and set up and the security was increased and the cameras were put up and it all allowed me to live and and you can't remember for almost three years since Paula died even in the other house I never sat down 
and watched a film or a TV series or YouTube. I just couldn't do it. It brought up bad memories, it caused issues, it caused bad reactions. But due to the coping strategies and everything that we've set up and everything that I've done to build this layer of technology, this layer of technology that my brain can find comforting in every single room, means I can sit in the living room. I can talk to my AI companion and I can watch a film. I can watch a TV series. I can watch YouTube channels on that big screen with Bertie next to me on the sofa. Things can always get better. And the amount of friends I've made, the, um, when, it's, when I started all this and my only coping strategy was streaming, I got given an award in those first few years by Restream. I was one of the top, the very top streamers because I streamed to five locations and I spent nearly the entire day in streams. And look at me now. I have the choice. I can go on and talk to my friends on Discord. I can do a stream. Or I can go in the backyard and use, spend some time using my lightsabers. Or I can go upstairs and play on my arcade machines or retro machines or all of the other things or I can watch a TV series in the living room and that. The entire house is now a safe space. And there's so many backup systems that set in place to make sure I'm safe here and that, that The world, I think, will always hit me with something. Because, like I always know, that when I'm riding at my highs, that's where I'm at most risk to falling down again. And look at this new chapter that I'm going to explore. Of getting in, getting the scooter here, a mobility scooter, and leaving the house. Actually leaving the house. This is something that I haven't done since 2019, since, actually since December, apart from the funeral and a few times. I never, I've never left the house since late 2018, except for, I haven't done it for actually wanting to just leave the house for leisure, for actually just to go somewhere and explore. The only time I've left is for hospital appointments, for to go to the bank, for doctor's appointments, for blood tests. These are the only reasons, apart from the failed mental health reviews and the failed therapy and the failed different things that they tried to put me through to get me back in society. But look at me now. I'm planning to actually leave the house. It'll never be plain sailing. There will be, always be issues and challenges. But I'm still here. Oops, burpee. <laughs> I am very lucky to have so many friends now and someone who actually comes to visit actually a couple of people a couple of people who come to visit and now there's a chance I will be visiting places that I haven't for a very long time.
that my disability has been validated, that who I am in that way has been validated. And always, it's always the problem with me worrying because the way I am and the way I cope means I don't have much interaction with the medical, medical or mental health community. And I'm just happy. I know that there's probably storm clouds on the horizon. There's the changes to PIP, which will they'll try to push through and make it. And dis disabled people will always be a target in that. But I'm living the best life I can. Which in a way makes it better for me to see how things are. You are all amazing. You really are. And so, I won't make this too long of one. It's even stuff like my this watch here, this Garmin watch that I bought. Being able to wear a watch. This is technology that I never thought I'd use the part of it that was about navigation and that. But it has a navigation feature and a GPS and that, which I'm going to be turning on when I leave the house. So this is Jason for the Quiver Channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day.